I am Dr. Seema Maitre, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Kite Group of Institutions, Ghaziabad. Welcome to my dear students. Today, I am going to cover the following topics. The different ways to add CSS in a HTML document about the pseudo classes and the pseudo elements. So there are different ways in which we can combine the CSS to the HTML document. They are inline, internal and external. They have their own advantages and disadvantages. So all the things I am going to cover in today's lecture. Inline. In this case, we use the style attribute inside any HTML element. In case of internal, we use a style element in the head section of the HTML document. In case of the external, by using a link element to link an external CSS. So in case of external, we are keeping the cascading style sheet or all the CSS, all the style in a different file. And we will save it with the extension .css. And after that, we will link it with the HTML document. So the most common way to add CSS is to keep the style in the external CSS file. So there are uh, they, all the three have their own advantages and disadvantages. So when we are talking about the inline CSS, so what it is providing, it is basically used to apply a unique style to a single HTML element at a time. Okay, it uses the style attribute of an HTML element, a particular element. Now the advantages that we can easily and quickly insert CSS rule to an HTML page, uh, to its different different element, one at a time. It is useful if only a small amount of markup is required. It don't need to create and upload a separate document as an external file. So it's fast. Now the drawback, the disadvantages that in this case we are mixing the display information into the HTML. Adding CSS rule to every HTML element is time consuming all the time. We are, if we have to take the same element again, we have to again write that uh, style. So to add the CSS rule to every HTML element is time taking and makes the HTML structure larger, messy. And in this case, we can't use full range of CSS features. So in this uh, example, what we are going to do to set the text color of this H1 element to blue and the text color of the P element to red. So whenever we will use the H1, so H1 will have this. But again, in the document, again, if we use the H1, it will not work. We have to give the style inside it again because here this style is inside this particular h1 it will not work for another h1 same case with the p now for the internal so to remove this uh, drawback what we have done if we want every p or every h every heading they want to share the same style for that the solution is given by this internal css it is used to define a style for a single HTML page. Now it is dedicated to the entire page. For if we are repeating the same element, it will work, but within that particular page. It is defined in the head section. Before starting the HTML document, in the head section, we define all this style for, uh, for all the elements which we require within a style element. Now the advantages of such internal CSS since we add the code within the same HTML file, so it does not need to upload multiple files. But the drawback, the disadvantage of internal CSS, that adding the code means the, we are adding the style to the same HTML document. It will result into the increment of the page size and the loading time. So uh, in this example, what we have done, we have set the color of all h1 to blue and the color of all the p to green 
body is same for the entire page body color will be the body background color will be pink so at one time in the head section we have defined with this uh, style element for body h1 and p after that when we start the body of our html document the body will automatically get this background color pink h1 will get the color blue and p will get the color green so any number of h1 or any number of p can share this style that is the benefit of internal which was not possible with inline now we move to external css in this case we are separating this html file and the style file where we are uh, putting all the layout all the design all the look and feel this we are keeping in separate file and the html document in the separate file so in the case of external css we save that external css file with the extension dot css so what is the use of uh, this external css it is used to define the style for many html pages it can work for number of html pages where we are linking it it uses an external style sheet add a link to it in the head section of each html page so with the help of this link we can merge all the features all the layout which we have given in that style.css into our html page this way number of html page can be beautified with the help of this single style.css wherever we will link it we will have the effect of that style sheet into that particular document so here we have made the two file one is html and one is css and we have saved the css file with the name style and extension .css and one thing is there in case of css we don't require we don't add any html tag we don't uh, we just add the layout we, uh, we just add the style okay so in the html file we have took this html this head and at the head section we have link this style sheet with this attribute rel okay to so link rel rel for relation we have related this html file with the style sheet type what type of file is that it is the css file and the reference the name we are giving the reference of that file and the name of that file the reference of that file is style.css so before starting our html document we have linked that style sheet into that html document so that all the effects which we have given in this css file can put it effect to that particular elements now as we start the body of the html page h1 for the p for the body now automatically what will happen whatever in this style.css we have defined we have put the style it will put it effect on this html elements so here yeah, for body background color pink h1 color is blue for p color is green so definitely when we are using the h1 all the heading will be blue for the p it will have the color green and for the body its background color will be pink so uh, how much clarity is there in this program the structure of html is in different file all the layout all the style all the beauty things we have kept in another file so how the clarity is there if ever we want to make the changes in this h1 all the h1 there is no need to make the changes individually we will just move that to that style file and we will make changes to that particular element and it will automatically reflect it to this particular file where we have linked it so advantages of external css that since we have seen here that css is kept in a separate document definitely this html will have the cleaner structure and also it will have smaller in size 
the second advantage is that style it can be used the same style can be used for multiple pages now the drawback the disadvantage of external css that suppose we have kept all the layout over here okay all this uh, style we have kept here but due to some problem if ever it is not rendered correctly it if it is not rendered correctly so what will happen it will not reflect to our web page so our web page our pages may not be rendered correctly until the external css is loaded because the style of this html document is dependent on this particular css file so if it is not get loaded properly it will not reflect it will not give its effect to this document it will not be rendered properly not rendered correctly that is the drawback because this file of uh, html it is dependent on this external css uploading or linking to multiple css file can increase our sites it will increase our sites download time because every time what is happening we are taking the external sheet it is it will take definitely much time so here time taking task it is a time taking task what we have to remember with an external style sheet we can change the look of the entire website by changing one file because this one particular css file can be linked within multiple html pages so thus a uh, entire web page we can give the same effect to all the pages of a complete website now the order we can put the style with an inline internal external and some style is uh, by default given by the browser so what will happen if the same effect is given for different uh, for the element if different style is given for the same element which will override which will win which effect will get over it so style will be uh, applied to html in the following order first it will prefer browser default if there is an external it will follow it if there is an internal style sheet means entire the uh, head tag or finally it will prefer the inline style if the style has been given in all these portion in the browser in the external style sheet in the internal style or in the inline what it will do when style conflict suppose here for p it has its own here for external p has its different style in internal the p tag has its another style in inline the p has the different style now what p will show in this case when the style conflict the nearest most recently applied always wins most recent one will win so example of cascading order now here Uh, in uh, external style sheet for h3 we have given color red alignment left and its size 8 point after that we have given the uh, the effect for the same uh, tag same element h3 as an internal style sheet so h3 has been given this time alignment right and size 20 point now what one which one is the nearest one internal one so the resultant attribute in this case color will be red because in this case here in case of internal we haven't defined the color so it will keep the color because color is not conflicting here we haven't given the color so color it will take from here from the external now the text align now it is conflicting because in external style sheet there is a text align in the internal style sheet again text align 
same with the font size in external style sheet and the font size in the internal style sheet so in this two cases for the alignment and the size it will prefer the nearest one and the nearest one is internal thus the resultant will be alignment right and font size will be 20 point so this is the cascading order now we'll talk about the pseudo classes so what are pseudo classes it is like a keyword which is added to the selector for adding an effect to the existing elements based on the state the name of the pseudo classes are not case sensitive now the syntax for writing a pseudo class it is start with a colon sign the first we take the selector and then we use this colon sign followed by the pseudo class and then we give the property and the value so different pseudo classes uh, can be covered over here the first one is active it is basically it is used to add style to an active element h over it means it add the special effect to an element when the mouse moves or you can say the mouse pointer moves over the element h over okay over the element link it add the style to the unvisited link which has not been visited yet visited how can we know that link has been visited a uh, number of time we have observed the link which we have visited its color get change so for it is for that visited one it add style to a visited link lang it is used to define a language to use in a specified element focus it select the element which is focused by user currently first child it adds a special effect to an element which is the first child of another element so these are the different pseudo classes which we will take in example now pseudo classes as we have discussed they are the elements whose states or you can say the appearance may change over time uh, we have just taken the simple example of a link which has not been visited after we click after we have visited its color get change so how we manage it so we can manage it with the help of this pseudo classes this is the syntax the element and the with, we will separate with the colon sign and we mention the pseudo class so link means a link which has not been visited yet visited it means uh, a link which has been visited active a link which is currently being clicked we have just click it h over it means a uh, mouse is moving over the link but we haven't clicked it okay so pseudo classes are allowed anywhere in css selector with the help of this program we can see the effect okay so we will uh, as we know it is uh, internal we are internally uh, adding all the effect so in the head section this under this style we will put all the style for different element for this uh, different pseudo classes so this a it is for the link a for anchor when the anchor link link is for which has not been visited which has not been visited we have given its color red as soon as the link the anchor is visited we have put the color green as soon as we move the mouse over that anchor or that uh, link it color will become hot pink when the link the anchor is active active means which is currently being clicked it color will become blue so we have decided this pseudo classes now in the program now we move over here we have make an anchor the anchor is this is a link this is a link this is your anchor and we have given the reference to https www.kai.edu target is underscore blank means as soon as we click this anchor this link 
whenever it will be clicked it will open it will move to this www.kai.edu in a blank blank window a different browser a blank browser okay it will uh, be open there so as soon as we haven't visited it it has not been visited it color will be red as soon as we visit it color will become green okay and if we move the mouse over there it color will become pink so all these changes we can do it practically we can see the same example we can do and see the effect so there are certain tips so it is just uh, in a bold letter it is a tip that uh, when you have to do uh, means this sequence when we have to uh, use the h over we can what uh, pseudo class has what effect it depends on the sequence so here we have given some note that a h over it must come after a link and a visited in the cs definition in order to be effective we can see the effect only after we follow the sequence here a active it must come after h over in the cs definition in order to be effective so uh, when you will do it in practical so just go through this tips and then start working on this link now first child pseudo class what will happen in the uh, first child pseudo class it matches a particular element and the element will be the first child of another element and then it add a special effect to that corresponding element just take the example so style h1 first child text indent 200 pixel color will be blue means this is only and only when h1 is the first child if again we use a h1 this effect will not work for another h1 means the effect is only for the first child the first time when we are using the h1 for the next h1 it will not work so body h1 it is the first heading in div it will be indented and its color will be blue okay the first time when we are using h1 it is the first child it will show the effect again when we are using the h1 it is again h1 but it is the second child in this case it will not show any effect of that style this style may not work for another h1 though it is also h1 but this is the second h1 second child it will not work for it because it will work for only for the first child first h1 which is used in the html body so for h1 it is showing the effect for another h1 it not giving any effect to it so this is the first child pseudo class now we move to another topic pseudo element the so two things are there pseudo class and pseudo element after completing this you will come to know the difference between the two now in case of uh, this pseudo element again it is like a keyword which is combined to a selector that defines the special state of the selected element now the difference between the pseudo class and the pseudo element is that unlike the pseudo classes this uh, pseudo elements are basically used to style the specific part of an element not the entire element because in case of the pseudo class it is for the entire element but in case of that uh, pseudo element it is used to style the specific part of an element whereas pseudo classes are used to style the entire element as we seen uh, we uh, saw in the previous example the effect was for h1 first h1 first child but it was for entire h1 but in case of this pseudo element it will show the effect for the particular portion of that element so we can uh, see with the help of example 
so in the example next a pseudo element can be used to style the first letter or the first line of an element not for the entire block not for the entire paragraph the pseudo element can also be used to insert the content after or before an element so how we can use it uh, pseudo element by using the double colon select we, here we are giving the selector and here we are giving after that double colon sign we are putting pseudo element what pseudo element we are going to use and its property and value means its effect what effect you are going to give so we take the example pseudo element different different uh, pseudo elements we can learn first the first one is the first letter only it will affect the first letter of the text next one is first line we can also use a double colon as well as a single colon okay the first line it is style the first line of the text before it is used to add something before the element's content after it is used to add something after the element's content selection it is used to select the area of an element selected by the user so these are the different pseudo element uh, just we will understand with the help of an example here we are taking the example of first letter pseudo element it will work only for the first letter of the entire element so how to give the style in the head section body we have provided uh, the alignment of all the text to the center okay this is for the body now for the h1 what we have given for h1 and in the h1 it is for only the first letter of this h1 means it will work not for the entire element h1 it is not working for the entire element it is working for a portion because it is a pseudo element not a pseudo class so this first letter it is going to work for only the first letter of this h1 tag okay for uh, so the first letter of this h1 the font family will be courier its size will be 3 cm and its color will be red but it will not work for the rest of the content of h1 it will just work for the first letter the next for h1 we have given color equal to blue okay so in the first case we have decided the first letter only and only for the first letter and this h1 it is it will work for the entire h1 it will work for entire one and here it will this effect will work only for the first letter so in this uh, we'll close the style close the head and move to the body and when we use the h1 first time and we wrote welcome to kite cac webtech what will happen in h1 we have mentioned the color blue as well as we have mentioned the pseudo element or the name of the pseudo element is first letter so in this h1 the first letter will show the effect of courier size 3 cm color will be red only it will be for first letter for the remaining part of the h1 its color will be blue okay now for the h2 as we haven't mentioned anything for the h2 it will be normal it will not uh, have any effect of this pseudo element nothing because we haven't worked we haven't put any style for h2 so this is the effect which is given to only the first first letter because we have used the first letter pseudo element so this is example now the next one is the first line it will work only for the first line for the remaining it will not work so it affect the entire line and remember it add the special effect to the first line of the text here again in the style body in the body we have given that all the text alignment should be center for the h1 first line 
because your heading can be of multiple lines so for the h1 first line the font family is courier size is 1 cm color will be blue it is for entire first line okay so when we will use this uh, h1 welcome to kite csc web technology so the effect will be given to the entire line because we have used the pseudo element first line so it is going to work for the first line entire line of that element for h2 we haven't mentioned anything so it will be a just a normal text like uh, whatever given to the h2 so this is an example of for this without any effect because we haven't mentioned any effect to h2 over here so this was example of pseudo element for first line now finally the difference between html and css what uh, difference we found between these two as we know html it is an hypertext markup language it is used to describe the structure of the web pages it is dedicated to the structure it is dedicated to the content of the pages whereas css it is stand for cascading style sheet it is a style sheet language that is dedicated to describe the presentation and design of the web pages which include the color the layout and other thing in html we can include both the thing as we have seen in case of inline internal css we can combine both means uh, the html content as well as the uh, style both we can merge combine at one uh, page but in case of css we never mention any of the html tag we just put the styles in the css we never mention the html so it is independent of html while in html we can combine both the structure as well as css so the html it is for basically the web page structure and content and css is basically for design and presentation in case of html it uses tags that are surrounding the content of any web page element while the in case of css it consists of selectors that are declared using block statement syntax so in today's lecture we covered the different ways of adding the cascading style sheet into a html document we learn about the pseudo classes and the pseudo elements that's all for today thank you take care